All right, guys. So um, I've got the analog to digital converter working with the analog input on RA0, and um, so now I can vary my pulse width modulation. And if you watch the the regular old pulse width modulation video that I did before this one, um, then a lot of this will be familiar to you. So of course I'm going to start with. Uh, my title, my list, my include, my configuration, and then I'm going to go to hex address zero to initialize, basically do some initial settings. So again, I set my oscillator to the desired frequency by moving this hex value into the working register and then into the oscillator control register. So this time I've done 56 instead of 66. So if we want to look at that and see what that is, then we can go here, go to the oscillator control register. So this time we've still got zero and then a five would be a 101. So this time I've got four megahertz instead of eight megahertz. So that's the only real difference there. And uh, next thing I do is set up the ADC positive and minus references to internal and um, I can do that by just clearing the ADCON1 register because let's take a look ADCON1, oh that didn't work control F ADCON1 alright so we'll go next, next, next next, next, here we go so bits 7 and 6 are unimplemented and red is 0 anyway. Bits 3 and 0 are unimplemented and red is 0. And so for my negative voltage reference, a 0 will give me the internal VSS, or ground if you will. And my positive voltage reference select bit, a 0 will give me positive voltage reference supplied by VDD. And so that's good because I don't really feel like setting up an external um, voltage into the reference pins and also the potentiometer on my board is already hardwired into uh, VDD and ground so that's perfect and it works out exactly how I need it so back here uh, disabled comparator 1 and 2 like always cleared the port A set it to all output but then I set RA0 to an input and then by setting the RA0 bit of the analog select register high now I've got uh, RA0 as an analog input which is what I need because it's, if it was digital then I'd really only get two states on and off so I need the analog so that we can do the analog to digital conversion obviously so uh, and then of course I've cleared uh, port C on you know whatever's sitting on the pins are now zero and, and then I set the um, I set the whole port to output because I'm not using anything of it anyway except for the um, uh, RC1 which is the where the pulse width modulation is and by keeping that as an output it enables the output drivers for the CCP2 module. So the next thing I've done is again set up the CCP2 CON register for pulse width modulation mode which is the C1100 and then I've decided to leave the two least significant bits of the duty cycle to zero so that I get a full, um, well, a real 0% uh, duty cycle. So again those are bits 5 and 4 of the CCP2 control register and um, I guess now is as good a time as any to uh, fill you in on how I've done this. Um, pulse width modulation is it has a 10-bit resolution as well as the uh, analog to digital converter also has a 10-bit resolution. Well that's great except that because the two least significant bits are here in the um, 
CCP2Con register, I really have no way to change those without creating a lookup table, which I have not gotten into yet. So for the meantime, I'm going to use 8 bits. So I'll have an 8 bit resolution instead of a 10 bit. But that's still, you know, good enough for what I'm doing here. Just learning and practicing and I'm going to dim an LED and look at the the trace on the scope and and so that's good enough. So I had to do some uh, creative thinking if you will to get it to work. Um, and once I get once I get familiar with lookup tables, I'll try and and do that and set it back up to a a 10 bit resolution. So Again, the timer is set up the same way. You know, I clear the interrupt flag. Uh, I've got it set to a one of one prescaler, and then I turn the timer on. And here I've cleared the analog to digital converter interrupt flag. That way, you know, it's not sitting there thinking it's interrupted and it's not going to do anything if it's if if it is. So that's the first thing I do. So here's the creative thinking. I had to left justify the analog to digital result and um, that way everything will go into those eight significant bits. If I right justify it then what will happen is I'll get some sporadic results you know I'll still get a good zero percent and a good hundred percent duty cycle but in between it'll just be um, random and erroneous really so I left justify instead and then um, I've set the the acquisition time to 12 times the uh, instruction basically the A to D time and then uh, I've set the ADC select bits for the desired time so if we go here to the AD con 2 register um, it might be the very next page if we're lucky. Yes. So we'll see that I left justified by leaving bit 7, 0. And then a 101. So that's 12 AD there. We've used the 1, 0 in the first four bits. And then we've got 1, 0, Okay, so we've got one one zero one. So I've set the uh, A to D conversion to be um, one sixteenth of the frequency of the oscillator. So next thing I do is turn the A, A to D on and set the uh, go not done bit. So, once that bit is set, it'll begin sampling. So, it's going to sample, and when it samples, and it's completed its sample, it will clear that bit automatically. And then I have to reset it again when I want it to sample again. So, um, I've created this second section here, which you know maybe I didn't need to I probably could have put all of this up here in the uh, initial settings <clears throat> and then just reiterated this at the beginning of the main program to clear the interrupt flag and then started here where I'll do a test of the go not done bit and if it's not clear, then I'll just keep continuing back here. I'll do a branch command to continue back here until it is clear. And once it's clear, we'll go ahead and take the result located in the uh, A to D result high register and move it into the CCP R2L register. And so that will give us our 8-bit resolution pulse width modulation. And that's going to determine the duty cycle. So a thing to note here is that if we use the A to D result low register to move here, 
then what we'll get is we'll get uh, basically for my setup instead of going from 0 to 100 you know and being completely linear um, throughout the middle region what we'll get is we'll get 0 at the low end we'll get 100 percent at the high end and then the tricky thing is is that it actually does that four times so it'll go from 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0 to 100, 0 to 100 all in one rotation so uh, make sure to left justify if you're trying to set up something like this and make sure to use the the high because that's the, the that's the higher bits you know the most significant bits so that's going to be the the first byte I guess you know the most significant byte and then the the A to D result low is just going to be the two least significant bits so anyway I think I've said all I need to say um, you know bye bye that's what he says so um, as always you know rate comment um, you know subscribe share it uh, if you've got some advice on how this thing works if, if there's a better way to do it you know let me know if if I'm not understanding something right, let me know. Um, give me your general comments about what you'd like to see in future videos. You know, how I can change it to make it more interesting. You know, I mean, this is, it's not really about me. It's about you. And uh, so keep any comments coming. You know, if you, want to, if you don't want to post a comment and you want to just, you know, send me an email, do that. Um, I'll try to respond as soon as I can. So I'm going to cut to the video and we'll look at the LED dimming, you know, from zero, from completely off to completely on. And then we'll look at the trace and watch the duty cycle change from zero to 100. And uh, that's pretty much it. And once I get familiar with uh, lookup tables, you know, maybe I'll modify this and come back and show you what I've done to make it 10-bit now instead of an 8-bit resolution. So thanks for watching and uh, here you go. All right, guys. Um, I apologize. I just realized that I had the the fan on the whole time I was recording the um, doing the screen capture there, um, going over the code. So hopefully that's not too loud and obnoxious. So I've got it figured out, obviously, and um, I'm just going to adjust this pot, and we'll watch the duty cycle change up here on the scope. So let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So we're at 0% now. And I'm going to start adjusting. There you go. You see it getting bigger. Higher. That's 48, 49, oh, 50. 50% and let's keep going and we should max out at about 99.22 percent 100 percent so that's cool let's go ahead and drop it back down to zero and we'll get back here on the board all right let it focus in we're gonna have to zoom out there we go I'm going to remove the, the probe there, and let's find the cathode, alright, there's the cathode, and we'll put that in ground, right there, and the anode to RC1, it should be in, I'm going to kill this overhead light, so that we can get a good idea. And you should still be able to see. And there we go. And now that's fully on. I know you don't really see much on the top end. But you do see it going down. So, it works. We're happy. Again, once I figure out how to do... Uh, some lookup tables and uh, get it to be 10-bit, we'll 
we'll check it out. I mean, it's going to do the same thing. It'll we'll just have a, a, a better resolution, I guess. So, hope you enjoyed. See you next time.